Hello, welcome back friends. Um, been a while since my last video, but um, today um, I'm going to just uh, have a look at a couple of books that I've read recently. Uh, during the couple of months I was um, on hiatus, I just didn't read any at all. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, <coughs> excuse me, but um, I've caught up with a couple since. So uh, I thought it's about time we did a we did a little book reads. Not a very long video, but uh, here we go. Right um, now, if there's two things I've learned over the years of reading science fiction, is a every novel by the Strugatsky brothers is a classic, and b prepare to be disappointed. Um, only one of these uh, is true in this case. Um, roadside Picnic. Now I know this is a very well thought of book um, and even though I was a little bit underwhelmed with it, uh, it wasn't a bad book by any means. Um, it concerns um, an alien visitation which came and went very quickly. They just came, hang about a bit and then blew away. Um, you know, it was almost blinking, you miss it. But they left behind um, some areas. I think this took took place in about six locations in the world, sort of scattershot locations, and um, they left behind um, a lot of artefacts in areas that were uh, dangerous um, to, to humans to go. So um, they're... There became a, a, a group of people who went into these zones at risk of their life um, to sell all this alien technology on the black market. Nobody knew what it was. Uh, nobody knew how to use it. You know, it just it, there just became a black market uh, in this stuff. And um, our hero, uh, I can never remember his name, Red, Red Shoeheart, that's him. Um, he, he was, he, he was a stalker and then he became some sort of, um, attached to some scientific, uh, expeditions, um, and, and he, he was able to go in legitimately and, um, he used to bring back all this stuff and, and, and sell it and to make a bit on the side. But, um, there was a rumor of, um, a golden, I think it was a golden globe, they called it golden sphere or something that granted, um, granted wishes <laughs> you know, I wish it to come true. It sounds almost like a, a fairy tale kind of story, that. But um, the... And, and, and the book is mainly concerned with um, with, his, with his quest um, to, to do that. Um, now, this is one of those books where there wasn't really a sort of a heroic figure like a, a gully filed... Uh, to hang your hat on and, and follow, you know, most of the characters in it weren't very nice people, uh, which made it a little bit more difficult for me to read. Um, but the, the idea, the, the title comes from <clears throat> um, a, a piece at the beginning of the book where um, some academic says it's um, the alien visitation was almost as if they came down, um, had a good time, ignored all of the... Um, people round about as if they were flies or, or animals that you would normally see on a picnic and then left all their rubbish behind and then cleared off again. Uh, that was the um, that was the notion uh, behind the title. Now, um, as I say, I, I, I didn't think it was, was a bad book. It was not the easiest book to read, to be quite honest, because as I say, most of the characters were, were dubious and not a very good character. Um, and and a few things happen uh, throughout the book, um, like Red's through going down. Red has a daughter, and she's a kind of a mutant. Um, and you know, the, there were little things like that thrown in. But I mean, the, as I said, the plot wasn't uh, exactly um, complicated or anything. That that was all there was to it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure, as I say, how. Uh, these um, these works have passed into law as being sort of great masterpieces, but I'd say everybody's got a different view. It's all uh, subjective, is it? Uh, objective, I can't remember. <laughs> subjective, isn't it? 
Um, so yeah, I would. Uh, there's not much more I could really say about it. Um, I'd give it, you know, on a, on a scale of one to ten, with five being average, I'd give it a seven actually, um, because it wasn't too bad, but it wasn't too good. And also, of course, it's um, it's a trans. <coughs> excuse me, it's a translation from Russian, uh, and I'm. I'm I wonder if, I mean, I haven't read many translations, but I wonder if uh, things sort of get lost in translation. Um, it's only a bleak, you know, bleak book. Um, okay, now secondly, um, I decided to read Super State by Brian Aldiss. Um, now, of course, Aldiss is one of our, um, our most respected SF authors. Um, I've read, I read one of his earlier books. I've not read too much of his stuff. Um, I read one of his earlier books recently, Earthworks, and I wasn't overly fussed with that. Um, so I thought I'd try something a bit more contemporary. Um, now, this particular novel is one of those books that I really do not like. Um, now, I say... I say I don't say that in 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 terms of, of the writing or, or the plot whatever. It's just one of these books that's got a boatload of characters and they're all introduced quite early, um, and it's difficult to to follow them all. You know you haven't as I said as I said with the last book you haven't got this central sort of heroic figure um, to to latch onto which which I like actually. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an ensemble piece of all of these disparate characters. And, and the idea of the book is that Europe is a, a super state, isn't it now? I don't know. Um, or it was till we, or till we moved out. Um, um, and uh, so, uh, it's either an African or an Asian nation, I can't remember, which um, they drop a bomb. <laughs> Uh, somewhere in in in, our, in the European super state, and it devastates a whole city. But they claim it was uh, an accident, and um, the the leaders of the the super state uh, have got to decide whether they're going to war over this uh, or not. And the book mainly concerned with um, with all of these side characters. The you know their sort of take on it, how it might affect them. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, and to be honest, the, the, that that's all there is to the plot. I mean, there's nothing else to it other than um, a lot of um, talk from these characters about what it means to them. And um, the, there's a scene where an interesting scene actually where a meteor falls in. I think it's Iceland uh, or somewhere. Was it the Antarctic? Oh, I can't remember offhand. Uh, and it actually knocks a bit of the ice shelf, well, a large piece of the ice shelf into the sea and it causes a tsunami wave, um, which hits sort of like uh, all, the, all the eastern sort of like seaboards. And we hear about one in Ireland, you know, where everybody gets sw uh, washed away and some of the characters lose their lives. Um, so, as I say, it's it's got some interesting little side issues, but... Um, as a as an overall narrative, you know, it it doesn't have too much coherence because you're dealing with so many different people uh, and their their thoughts and their hopes and fears. Uh, as I say, there, there's not really um, there's not really too much to say. I mean, it says on the back, "Welcome to the near future, to the super state of Europe, forty years from now." It doesn't feel like an SF book, I've got to say. It's a place where technology advances ever onwards, where humanitarian concerns slip ever backwards, and where the answers to the big questions remain as elusive as they've always been. Brian Aldiss' wonderful novel takes us into a land bedeviled by the dual threat of war and global warming, where androids are a nuisance and are kept locked up in cupboards, and where a subversive, a subversive group called the Insanitics, sending out doleful messages to worry and provoke the population there's uh, there's a nice little um i i'll not this this will spoil it if i tell you what happens but there's a nice little um side issue where uh, one of the characters sons is on this um 
mission to one of the moons of Jupiter to look for intelligent life. <clears throat> and the, uh, the, the upshot of that is um, quite amusing or tragic, depending on your point of view. Um, that's all I'll say about that, but it, uh, it's, almost, it's almost worth reading just for that, uh, that particular uh, uh, piece, uh, that particular segment. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard one to mark this. I mean, I think on, on that scale of 1 to 10, yeah, it'd probably be worth a 6 or 7. Um, it, it, was, it was quite easy to read, and, and because Audis uh, writes very well. Um, so, yeah, so that was the, uh, the two books I've read recently. I'm into a, one at the minute, which uh, I'll no doubt discuss with you in due course. Okay, um, not make this video too long. Um, so that was that. Uh, thank you all ever for as ever for watching and subscribing and uh, thanks for all your good wishes. Um, um, people are happy to see me back which is nice <laughs> and uh, I'll be back very shortly with something that isn't quite science fiction but um, has a it is, is a relation of, shall we say. Okay, well, thanks for watching again, and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye now.